five six new order place to sell short at one sixteen seven five six what is the significance of a lower oil price jeffrey curry has been very good on this and here is the shock of brent under 40. what is the significance i think in the near term it's it's clearly been part of the reason why why markets have traded so weak um, oil prices are currently in, in a relatively instable equilibrium because there's a lot of inventories um, and at the margin if you have demand disappoint and like a second wave there's a real concern that you have sharp declines in oil prices again like you had earlier in the year and why that matters is for inflation expectations. Like I mentioned earlier one of the most important drivers of markets currently are the real yields. I opened new position, short position on euro at 116.756. And that weighs on the whole market. So from that perspective, oil prices moving lower um, is, is actually a clear negative. You could argue it's a positive for consumption, it's a positive um, um, for, for, for kind of uh, the consumer, but that doesn't matter, of course, while you're in the COVID wave. I think right now it's been a clear negative that you have uh, weak oil prices, and it reflects this kind of concern that the market cannot really embrace uh, a positive growth outlook. Um, Christian, we're four days from the U.S. election. Is there anything that you would be buying right now? Some of the polls in certain swing states are narrowing, so you need a bit more of a hedge in your portfolios. Well, I, I think you're right. The uncertainty on the elections contributed as well to the volatility um, we've had in the last few days. In conversations we're having with clients, there is certainly a desire to take advantage of the current volatility um, in the sense that people want to buy the dip. But at the same time, there is a lot of question marks where people just say, um, maybe I just wait until after the elections. And, and, and especially international investors, but pretty much most investors are, are always facing a lot of uncertainty in these elections because we've seen big surprises in recent years around political events. So my sense is the um, elections, if they have a clear outcome, um, should provide relief. And at the margin, that should support risk appetite. And if you do get a, a, a kind of blue wave, a democratic sweep, I think our economists and our strategists do actually think it could shift a bit more pro-cyclical markets because it kind of uh, supports the expectations for fiscal stimulus. So that's kind of the trading template. If it's um, a very clear outcome, uncertainty relief, no matter who wins, and if it's a divided or a, a unified government, if it's a, a kind of democratic um, sweep, um, you could have a slightly more procyclical um, shift. And in line with what we discussed earlier, you could also see value do a bit better versus growth because you have a lot of these very profitable growth companies possibly, mm -hmm. um, you know, suffering from taxes and the regulation, as we know. Christian, thank you so much. Christian Muller-Glissman is with uh, Goldman Sachs. Futures at negative 40. Stay with us. Uh, coming up later in the U.S. morning, Mark Mobius will join us uh, from Mobius Capital Partners. This is Bloomberg. Good morning. Women leaders were actually better at controlling the deaths from COVID-19. Do you think out of this pandemic, we'll see more countries be willing to elect female leaders? When we look at women leaders, 
we tend to project on them baggage that they shouldn't bear. Women are given an opportunity when no one else wants to do the job. Women had a very clear objective. Uh, they wanted to save lives. The women leaders, if you look at their careers, have also built up a level of, of trust. In fact, women have to be better at communication in order to be elected uh, as leaders, whereas this doesn't hold true for men. We need to get those sexist stereotypes out of our head and give women a fair run for leadership. Trying to change the stereotypes about women is not only the business of women, but men have to be part of it. Bloomberg Television is reinventing one of the most iconic brands in financial television for a new audience. Join me to see the news program for the clever investor. This is Bloomberg Wall Street Week. This is a market that over the past few weeks has made it clear it wants to go higher. It got a little spooked by the idea that geopolitical potentials are rising. I'm Rishka Gupta with the Bloomberg Business Flash. Amazon is projecting a big jump in sales in the current quarter, beating analyst estimates. That indicates the world's largest e-commerce company expects the surge in online buying during the pandemic to extend to the holidays. Still, Amazon's shipping expenses rose faster than revenue. And Facebook's indicating that a major advertiser boycott has had a limited impact. The social network says sales rose a better than expected 22% in the third quarter, and the number of monthly active users beat estimates too. Still, there was an unusual decline in users in the U.S. and Canada. That record-setting Ant Group IPO is generating unprecedented investor interest. Shares are being listed in both Hong Kong and Shanghai. Bids for shares in Shanghai totaled a record $2.8 trillion yesterday. That exceeds supply by more than 870 times. And that is your latest Bloomberg Business Flash. Francine Tom. Hey, Ritika, thanks so much. Again, we're looking at the markets here, and it's real simple. Another down day, this off the tech disappointment, and quite frankly, further pandemic news. Futures in negative 38 Dow futures at negative 311 uh, as well. Dollar comes in, but not all that much. 93.87 on DXY continues to show the resiliency this week of the dollar. Uh, West Texas, 36.40. Coming up, an interesting gentleman, gentleman serving President Obama and President Trump, Louis Lukens. This is Bloomberg. Good morning.
As you can see, I placed stop and profit for my short position at Sense of the real time action, the 10 year yield tumbling now 11 basis points. So, continuing in it, this knee jerk risk off field. Good morning, everyone. Bloomberg surveillance on a Friday from London, from New York. We're continuing to monitor the tragedy in Nice. There is not much information, news flow, but we'll watch that today, and particularly the actions of the president, uh, Mr. Macron of France. It'll be interesting to see how that nation moves forward in the coming days uh, and weeks. Right now, on U.S. diplomacy, Louis Lukens is with us with Signum Global Advisors, and he is a rare breed. He has public service to the nation with President Obama, uh, with uh, Vice President Biden and also with President Trump, and we're thrilled that he could join us uh, this morning. Uh, Louis Lukens, there will be a massive partition of a Trump win and a Biden win as well. Let me first go to President Biden, which will be a radically different State Department than what we saw with Mr. Trump. Is it Obama redux, or will there be a different Biden tone at State? Oh, I think there's a different Biden tone. I mean, the world has changed pretty drastically in the last four years. So a lot of the instincts that Joe Biden had through his career as a senator and as vice president, which is um, an appreciation of alliances and the importance of relationships with friends and allies around the world, will still be there. But the way that foreign policy is framed and, and the objectives of foreign policy, I think, will be a little bit different with more of a focus on you know, bringing jobs back to America and, and trying to rebuild the American economy after the devastation it's seen over the last year. In diplomacy, you serve the nation in Africa, your final tour of duty in the United Kingdom. And the question is obvious, and this comes from economics, this phrase hysteresis, which is long-term unemployment and the impact upon a society. If we have a second-term Trump, and obviously you have an attention to the Democrats, but if we have a second term Trump, do we risk a di diplomatic hysteresis? Yes, we do. I and mean, the State Department has been pretty devastated during the Trump presidency. And this is a president who doesn't trust the State Department, doesn't believe in diplomacy, um, who doesn't understand the importance of alliances and relationships. Everything is very transactional and has made a real effort to weed out senior State Department people who he sees as untrustworthy. Uh, the famous deep state, which of course does not exist. And I think another four years of that would really decimate the ranks of the Foreign Service, and it would take a long time to, to rebuild the State Department after eight years of a President Trump. Louis, many people voted early. Who voted early? Is it people that didn't vote last time around, or is it just people that were afraid of queuing up because of COVID? You know, how does that change actually the election? Well, I think it's a combination of both. There's not some, there's not a lot of great data on who's voting early because um, because most of those people have voted by ballot, not all, but most uh, by mail and ballot. It's hard to do exit poll. I closed position on euro at one sixteen seven three six. As you can see, short position closed. We have profit two hundred pounds. Joe Biden, obviously, because young voters in general tend to vote for the Democratic Party. Um, and I think it's a combination of people who haven't voted before, who are energized to vote this year for a lot of various reasons, but also people who are worried about queuing on, you know, on Election Day because of the coronavirus, 
and want to make sure their vote is in early and is registered early. Is there the Trump shy voter, Lewis? I know we started off the conversation with you saying, look, you know, Biden has a pretty solid lead. What if it's much narrower than the polls tell us? Well, I've never bought into this notion that there's a huge cohort of shy Trump voters out there that aren't being picked up by the polls. Um, I, I think, you know, to the extent that there is, that is probably offset, more than offset, by the huge number of young voters who are coming out to vote and who also don't tend to get picked up in the polls very much. But the polling has been fairly accurate. And, and a couple of things that are different from, from this year to, to four years ago, the, the number of undecided voters is much smaller. So four years ago at this point, there's still over 10% of Americans hadn't made up their mind yet. That number